We're here at Light Reading's 5G transport event in New York City. I'm with Gordon Mansfield from AT&T, who just gave our uh, keynote uh, th this morning. Uh, thanks for doing that, by the way. Hey, no problem. Um, one of the things I, I have to get into sort of right away was, was you were very, um, uh, uh, right up front, you talked about being open and being interoperable. Yeah. And, and there's a very practical sort of reason for that from AT&T's point of view. Can you maybe give us a little bit on why it's so important that AT&T is driving the industry toward more open and interoperable networks? Yeah, no, absolutely. So one of the biggest challenges that we've always had, especially in the radio access network, is, is uh, when you build out uh, a city with a particular uh, infrastructure partner, you're kind of locked in. And so it's very, very important for us to open that up uh, that allows us the flexibility to where when we need a solution that that infrastructure provider may not have, mm -hmm. um, that we have options. We can go to somebody else, get uh, a unique radio configuration, uh, and, and still have that integrate well into uh, the rest of our network. And so uh, uh, that's, that's, that's the, the, the most important driver out of all of that. Yeah, in, in the, um, uh, another point that you mentioned that's, that's sort of, again, right on the kind of the cutting edge of what we're hearing about network build-outs is, is the importance of automation in the network, um, especially, uh, especially as it gets, uh, as it gets to uh, the swapping out nodes. Uh, g give me a little bit uh, of your perspective on why it's so important and where you need automation the most in, in the 5G network. No, absolutely. As, as you start to introduce 5G, um, you build on top of, you have your macro network that already has tens of thousands of sites. As you right. densify, you're now densifying with tens of thousands of sites. And yeah. so when your network suddenly, uh, over a very short period of time, is almost doubling in size, if, if you don't create layers of automation that allow a lot of tasks that today are manual and require human interaction, um, you, you, you really start to drive up your cost. And so mm -hmm. the automation uh, uh, capabilities are necessary just to kind of maintain and manage a, a quality network as you scale to, to the numbers of sites that, that ultimately will be in a 5G network. Okay, and how, uh, as you're scaling to these sites, how do you make use of the fiber um, in the most efficient way? Because it's, it's impossible to, I mean, most of the, you know, places that, that 5G is going into at first are, are fiber fed. But what we're hearing is that a lot of places really haven't, um, they don't have the infrastructure yet. And, and so how are, how are you sort of uh, anticipating that problem and overcoming it? Because AT&T can't afford to just be um, in a handful of cities with 5G. It's got to be everywhere. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, we're, the, for us, we're focused on mobile. Okay. Uh, and, and when we focus on mobile, the deployment of the millimeter wave cells will be where the traffic is densest, and typically fiber is not a problem in those locations. Okay. And so our early builds, uh, there's plenty of fiber there, mm -hmm. but certainly you got to get efficiency, and you've got to you, you, you've got to get to where you can use less strands to serve that traffic. And so we're driving a lot of uh, a lot of capabilities, both from a, a RAN infrastructure perspective, but as well uh, within the transport solutions to to minimize the number of fiber strands required to serve this explosion of traffic. As you get further out, um, certainly you, you, you know, having fiber to every pole uh, isn't, isn't necessarily uh, something that, that is uh, very pragmatic. And so uh, we've been driving in the standards what they call IAB, which is basically right. uh, in-band signaling using the same millimeter airwaves for backhaul. Uh, and so we'll have a mix. Uh, it'll, it'll grow over time. It's not, you know, it's not, hey, we start with this solution today and that's the way it'll always be. Right. Uh, we'll continue to evolve, introduce new capabilities, and that'll, that'll lower the fiber counts and, and expand the, 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 the access. Yeah, and then all, all, all the while, the customers aren't, aren't, aren't aware of what the, you know, what the technology is behind the scenes. They're just simply benefiting from the bandwidth, the throughput, and more important, the latency that these networks require. Absolutely. If the customer is aware of all of the things that are going behind, somebody didn't, uh, you know, I probably didn't do my <laughs> job right. Uh, okay. and, and so we need to be able to, to, to upgrade uh, very seamlessly with, with, with software. We need to in, introduce greater and greater capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's face it, right, it's all about the new services. Right. You know, I, I like to, to think in, in the terms of G right you know 1g brought voice 2g text 3g was really about uh, you know uh, web web enablement web, yeah 4g was about video well, well 5 is really about that immersive entertainment when we think about the consumer mm -hmm. right and so we need to get to where instead of playing a video game you're virtually in the video game and it's all done through your mobile network okay that's that's the vision is is in enabling new services new capabilities that consumers you know want to want to uh, you know, interact with, yeah. not the underlying technology to deliver it. That's that's 
that's the most exciting part too, because we start talking about this immersion. Um, so as, as this happens, one more network question, one more boring network question, and then I'll let you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, as, as this happens, another big discussion that's happening in technology about these build outs is where the edge is. I love the way you categorize this, you sort or, or clarified this. You said the edge is wherever you want it to be. So obviously, um, I'm, I take your meaning to be that, that as the applications become more intensive, the edge moves closer. Is that what you were going for there? Yeah, what I would, you know, AT and T's been very bullish on on moving uh, moving things further to the edge. We've been very public about that, mm -hmm. uh, and so we'll move our network uh, our network edge closer to users, which lower lowers the latency for the wide area use. Mm -hmm. But then when you get into special purpose applications, you can even lower latency further mm -hmm. by putting edge compute right where the processing is ne is needed, whether that be on prem for an industrial application whether it be a smart city where, where some minimal edge compute capability is built right into, uh, right into the pole. Okay. Uh, all of those things are possible. Uh, we're experimenting and, and delivering on, on those types of capabilities already today, and it'll just grow from here. Okay, well, we won't hold you up here any longer. You need to get back to work. Thank you so much for right. being with us today. Thank Appreciate you so it. much.